Hey, dear. Welcome to my world of cross-dressing stories. If you are new, please subscribe. And now, let's start the story. The sun was shining with the promise of a perfect summer day, but the warmth didn't reach me. The school corridors were buzzing with the idle chatter of students, all eager for the impending holidays, but my mind was elsewhere, tangled in a net of anxiety and unknowing. I'd been called to the headmaster's office, a summons that rarely meant anything good. My stomach churned with nerves as I walked down the hallway, each step heavier than the last. Sitting across from the headmaster, his face unusually solemn, I prepared myself for a reprimand over some minor mischief I couldn't even recall. Instead, his words fell like a hammer on my world. Johnny, there's been an accident, he began, his voice unusually gentle. It's your father. He's been very badly injured, but he will survive. Time seemed to slow, the words echoing in my mind like a bad recording. My father, the distant figure always shrouded in a veil of business trips and brief phone calls, injured and far away. I felt a cold shiver run down my spine, the room spinning slightly as I tried to process the news. Your mother has already gone to be with him. She's on a flight right now, he continued. The fact that she had left without me stung sharply, a silent testament to the chaos this accident had caused. I nodded numbly, unable to articulate the storm of emotions brewing inside me. Why hadn't she taken me with her? The answer lay halfway around the world, at my father's bedside, too far from the grasp of a 16-year-old boy. The headmaster's voice brought me back to the present. You won't be going home this vacation. You'll be staying with your grandmother. My grandmother? A figure so distant in my life, she felt more like a myth. My father never spoke of her, and the one memory I had of her was shrouded in the somber tones of a funeral we once attended together. They hadn't exchanged a single word that day. I struggled to keep my composure as the reality set in. This summer wouldn't be about lazy days or adventures with friends. It would be about silent houses filled with the echoes of absent family members and a grandmother who was a stranger to me. The rest of the day passed in a blur. Sympathetic glances and awkward pats on the back from teachers and classmates felt like they were meant for someone else. Someone who belonged to a normal family. I couldn't belong to that world, not with the weight of my father's condition hanging over me. The journey to my grandmother's was set for the next week, right after school ended. As I packed my bags that night, the walls of my room seemed to close in on me. Each fold of clothing, each stashed away book, felt like I was packing away the last remnants of normalcy. I was heading into unknown territory to live with a woman who was no more than a name coupled with a distant relation. I couldn't help but wonder, as I zipped up my suitcase, what secrets lay buried in the heart of my family? What had torn my father and his mother apart? And more importantly, could a summer with a grandmother I barely knew help mend the tattered seams of my family's tapestry? Or would it only deepen the rifts that seemed to define the generations before me? As I lay in bed that night, the moon casting shadows across my room, I realized this summer would be one of discovery, about my family, about my father, and maybe about myself. The day I was to leave for my grandmother's house arrived with a rush of anxious energy. I stood outside the school, my bags at my feet, waiting for a grandmother I could barely remember. The image I had of her was framed by the stiff, distant aura of the rare family gatherings we attended. But when the car pulled up, a sleek, new model that seemed to hum quietly with restrained power, it wasn't the old, frail lady I expected who stepped out. She was surprisingly youthful, her posture straight and her step confident. Dressed in a tailored suit that matched the car's elegance, her hair was a silver gray, cut in a stylish bob that framed her sharp blue eyes, eyes that seemed to miss nothing. Johnny, she said, her voice clear and strong, a smile touching the corners of her mouth. It's good to see you. The drive to her home was filled with an air of awkwardness, the silence punctuated by her attempts at making conversation. She asked about school, my interests, questions that seemed normal but felt probing under the circumstances, she mentioned the summer and the plans she had in store, 
her words laced with hints of new experiences and family traditions. Her cryptic comments left me puzzled, adding layers to the mystery of what this summer would entail. As we drove through the gates of her property, I was taken aback by the sheer size and beauty of her home. It was a grand mansion, surrounded by manicured lawns and vibrant gardens that seemed to stretch endlessly. The house itself was a blend of modern and traditional architecture, with large windows that reflected the bright summer sun. Stepping inside, the interior was just as impressive, but it was the peculiarities that caught my attention. The hallway was lined with portraits of women, all elegantly dressed, their expressions serene yet distant. My grandmother caught me looking. Beautiful, aren't they? They were all strong, influential women in our family. You'll hear their stories this summer, she said, her voice a mix of pride and nostalgia. She led me to my room, and that's when I felt a real jolt of confusion. The room was large and beautifully decorated, but it was unmistakably feminine. The walls were painted a soft pastel color, and the furniture included a white ornate dressing table and a bed covered with a floral duvet. On the dressing table, alongside an array of perfumes and lotions, were several magazines, ones typically read by women my mother's age, focused on fashion and lifestyle. I turned to question her, but she seemed oblivious to my discomfort. I hope you find your room comfortable, Johnny. Dinner will be at seven, she said, leaving me alone with my thoughts. As I unpacked, my mind raced. Why was the room designed like this? What was the meaning behind those portraits? And what did she mean by family traditions? The room, with its subtle yet undeniable femininity, seemed like a puzzle piece that didn't fit, unless there was a bigger picture I was yet to see. Sitting on the edge of the bed, I felt a mix of intrigue and apprehension. This house, with its hidden stories and my grandmother's mysterious hints, held secrets that I was both eager and hesitant to uncover. The summer stretched out before me, filled with the promise of revelations that could change everything I thought I knew about my family, and perhaps about myself. Several days passed at my grandmother's mansion, each one unraveling more of its enigmatic charm, yet leaving a trail of questions unanswered. My grandmother had a routine for us. Mornings were spent in the vast gardens or the library, Afternoons involved visiting parts of the estate, and evenings were for dinner followed by long conversations that danced around the edges of something deeper, something unsaid. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden glow through the large dining room windows, my grandmother seemed unusually pensive. Dinner passed with less conversation than usual, and as we moved to the sitting room, I sensed a shift in her demeanor. She poured two cups of tea, handed me one, and settled across from me with a solemn expression. Johnny, there's something important about our family that you need to know, she began, her voice steady but her hands clasping the teacup tightly. It's a tradition that has been part of our family for generations, though it's one your father chose to step away from. I leaned forward, the weight of the moment settling around us. What kind of tradition? I asked, my curiosity piqued. It's about understanding and empathy, Johnny. In our family, the young men are introduced to their feminine sides through cross-dressing. We believe it refines manners, sensitivity, and above all, a deeper understanding of oneself and others. The words hit me like a cold splash. Cross-dressing? I tried to keep my expression neutral, but inside, a storm of emotions was brewing. Confusion, disbelief, and a hint of anger swirled together. You mean dressing as a woman? I asked, trying to mask the tremor in my voice. Yes, she replied calmly. It's more than just dressing, though. It's about experiencing life from a different perspective, even if just for a little while. Why? The question escaped me before I could think it through. Because, Johnny, empathy is the cornerstone of character. Understanding the challenges and experiences of others particularly women, can broaden your horizons in ways you can't imagine. I sat back, trying to process her words. My mind flashed back to the room she had prepared for me, the portraits in the hallway, and the stories unspoken. It was overwhelming, and yet, amidst the shock, there was a flicker of curiosity. Why had my father rejected this tradition? And who was this uncle, now aunt, I'd never heard of? Seeing my confusion, my grandmother continued, 
Your uncle was much like you, skeptical at first, but he found something in that experience that changed him for the better. He chose to embrace that side of him fully, becoming the woman he always felt he was meant to be. My thoughts raced. An uncle turned aunt, a family tradition of cross-dressing, and a father who had distanced himself from all this. My family's history was more complex than I had ever imagined. Will you try it, Johnny? For me? Her voice was gentle, coaxing. It's not just for the family. It's for you. To see a world that's different, yet profoundly the same. I hesitated, the initial shock still fresh. But beneath that, there was an undeniable pull, a desire to understand the roots of my family's hidden past, and perhaps to understand myself a little better. Okay, I finally said, my voice barely above a whisper. I'll try. A smile, warm and approving, spread across my grandmother's face. Thank you, Johnny. Let's begin this journey together. That night, as I lay in my room, the reality of what I had agreed to loomed over me. I was about to step into a world so unfamiliar, yet strangely compelling. It wasn't just about wearing a dress. It was about unraveling the tightly wound threads of tradition, identity, and acceptance in my family. And maybe, just maybe, finding out where I fit into this intricate tapestry. The morning after my conversation with my grandmother, I woke to find the sunlight filtering softly through my curtains, casting patterns on the floral duvet. The realization of my agreement to embrace the family tradition hit me anew. Today, I would begin a journey unlike any other, guided by Marie, the maid who had always maintained a discreet presence around the mansion. Marie knocked gently on my door just after breakfast. Good morning, Johnny. Are you ready to begin? She asked, a supportive smile on her face. Her calm demeanor eased some of my nervousness. I nodded, feeling a mix of apprehension and curiosity. We'll start with the basics, Marie explained, as we entered a room that had been transformed into what resembled a dressing area, complete with a full-length mirror, a makeup table, and various garments neatly arranged. The way you dress, the way you carry yourself, it all tells a story. Today, you start telling a new one. The transformation process was meticulous. Marie taught me how to select undergarments that were not just functional, but also suited the kind of clothes I would be wearing. Every piece of clothing has its purpose, Jenny, she said, using the name we had agreed upon for my feminine persona. I slipped into the garments, feeling the unfamiliar snugness and softness against my skin. Next came the makeup. Marie was patient, showing me how to apply foundation, how to accentuate my eyes, and how to choose lipstick colors that complemented my complexion. Each brushstroke felt strange, yet transformative. Looking in the mirror, I saw myself slowly changing, not just in appearance, but in the way I began to see myself. Posture and movement are just as important, Marie continued. She taught me how to walk, how to sit, how to gesture in ways that were considered traditionally feminine. The shoes, the slight heels, changed my stance, making me more aware of my body and space than I had ever been. Dressed fully as Jenny, I hardly recognized the person staring back at me from the mirror. There was a vulnerability in her, a softness I had never allowed myself to explore. The real test came when Marie suggested we attend a local community event. It's a casual gathering, a perfect setting for Jenny to interact with others, she explained. The event was held in a nearby village hall, a small but lively gathering of local artisans and residents. As we entered, my heart raced with the fear of being recognized, of being judged. But Marie stayed close, her presence reassuring, interacting with others as Jenny was enlightening. I noticed how differently I was treated, more smiles, gentler tones, and a kind of politeness I hadn't often experienced as Johnny. Conversations often revolved around topics I had rarely discussed with strangers, from fashion tips to family. Each interaction was a lesson in the subtle ways gender influenced social exchanges. Yet, it was not just about how others saw me, but how I began to see the world. The vulnerability I felt made me more empathetic, more attuned to the nuances of others' expressions and words. For the first time, I understood the weight of the gaze, the unspoken expectations placed upon an individual based on appearance alone. 
As the day concluded and we drove back to the mansion, I felt a mix of exhaustion and exhilaration. Jenny had opened my eyes to a new spectrum of human experience, challenging my perceptions and prejudices. Sitting in my room that night, I reflected on the journey so far. The transformation was more than just physical, it was emotional, a redefining of my understanding of identity and empathy. I realized that embracing Jenny was not just about fulfilling a family tradition, but about expanding the boundaries of my own identity, about understanding and bridging the gaps not just within my family, but within myself. Several weeks into my transformation as Jenny, I had grown somewhat accustomed to navigating social settings with a new identity. My grandmother, observing my progress with a mix of pride and nostalgia, suggested we attend another local event, a larger gathering that promised more interactions and experiences. As we arrived at the bustling community fair, the air was vibrant with the laughter of children and the murmur of hundreds of conversations, a tapestry of life in its fullest expression. I moved through the crowds with a newfound confidence, Marie by my side, guiding and observing. The afternoon sun cast long shadows and the scent of summer was everywhere. It was during a moment of distraction, while looking at a stall adorned with handmade crafts, that I heard a voice that sliced through the hum of the crowd. John, John, is that you? The voice called out, uncertain but insistent. Turning, I found myself face to face with Mr. Henderson, a close friend of my father's from years past, his eyes squinting, trying to reconcile the image before him. My heart lurched. This was the first real test of my disguise, and the stakes were personal. Um, no, sir, I think you're mistaken, I replied, my voice softer, higher pitched than Johnny's usual tone. Mr. Henderson's brow furrowed in confusion, but he continued, I'm sorry, it's just... You remind me so much of someone I used to know. Marie swiftly intervened, offering a distraction by asking Mr. Henderson about his interest in the crafts. He was momentarily diverted, but his initial suspicion had planted a seed of dread in me. The interaction left me shaken, a reminder of how fragile this new identity could be. The ride home was quiet, the incident weighing heavily on my mind. I was beginning to understand the complexities of the world Jenny inhabited, but the potential consequences of this experiment becoming public terrified me. Upon returning to the mansion, I sought out my grandmother, needing to confront the situation and its implications. I found her in the library, her figure silhouetted against the window. Grandmother, I started, my voice tense. Today at the fair, I was nearly recognized. What if Mr. Henderson figures it out? What then? My grandmother set her book down, her expression composed. Johnny, I know this is hard, but remember, this is about learning, about growing. But what about Dad? What if it gets back to him? You know he severed ties over this very thing. My voice rose, a mix of fear and frustration boiling over. She stood, approaching me with a calmness that contrasted sharply with my agitation. Your father made his choices, Johnny, and you are making yours. This journey is yours alone, not his. But why did he leave, really? Why did he cut you off? The questions had been burning inside me, and now they spilled out, demanding answers. My grandmother sighed, a long, deep sound filled with years of regret. He couldn't accept who he was, who we are, a family that defies conventions. He saw it as a weakness. I saw it as strength. I struggled to absorb her words, the air thick with revelations. And my uncle, the aunt I never knew? He embraced his true self, something your father couldn't understand or accept. The conversation grew heated as layers of our family's past were peeled back, exposing the raw, complex connections that had shaped our lives. It was a pivotal moment, one that cracked the surface of long-held family secrets, revealing the depths of identity and acceptance beneath. That night, as I lay in bed, the mansion around me felt both like a sanctuary and a cage, the confrontation with my grandmother had opened a new understanding between us, but it had also left me with more to ponder about my family, my father, and myself. Where did I fit into this tapestry of tradition and rebellion? And could I find a middle ground where Johnny and Jenny could coexist, or even merge? These questions haunted the quiet corners of the night as I drifted into uneasy sleep. 
the journey far from over. As the summer waned, the days becoming shorter and the air cooler, I found myself reflecting more deeply on the experiences and revelations that had shaped my journey as Jenny. The confrontation with my grandmother had left a residue of raw emotion, but also a clarity that began to seep into the way I viewed our family legacy. One late afternoon, my grandmother and I took a walk through the sprawling gardens of the estate, the path winding through late-blooming flowers and the shadows of tall old trees. It was during these quiet moments that our conversations often reached beneath the surface, touching the core of our thoughts and feelings. Johnny, my grandmother began, her voice thoughtful as she looked out over a bed of roses. I've seen you struggle and grow this summer, and I want you to know how proud I am of you, proud of your courage to embrace this part of our heritage. I listened, the breeze carrying her words gently toward me. I've been thinking about Dad a lot, I admitted, the words feeling heavy yet necessary, about how hard it must have been for him to reject this part of himself, this part of our family. She nodded, understanding coloring her features. Your father was always fighting against what he thought made him weak, but in doing so, he was denying a part of himself that could have brought him peace. He couldn't see the strength in vulnerability, in empathy. That word, empathy, resonated with me. It was what I had gained most from my time as Jenny, an empathy that stretched beyond gender, reaching into the essence of human experience. I think I understand him better now. I said, the garden around us a tapestry of light and shadow, and I understand why you introduced me to this tradition. It's never just about the clothes, Johnny. It's about seeing the world through others' eyes, finding kindness for their struggles, their pain, she explained, her eyes meeting mine with an intensity that underscored her words. The more we talked, the more I felt a release from the anger and confusion that had clouded my relationship with my father. I began to see his actions not as rejection, but as protection, a misguided attempt to shield both himself and me from what he perceived as a harsh world. This understanding brought with it a sense of peace and a new resolve. I wanted to take this empathy, this deeper sensitivity back with me, to carry forward as Johnny and as Jenny in whatever forms that might take. I wanted to use this experience not to create barriers, but to build bridges both within my family and beyond. As the summer drew to a close, I felt transformed, not just outwardly, but inwardly. The dresses, the makeup, the walks and heels, they were external expressions of a much deeper internal journey. I had learned to navigate the complexities of identity, to embrace the fluidity of who I could be. On one of the last evenings, sitting on the veranda overlooking the gardens, now tinged with the colors of early fall, my grandmother and I shared a quiet cup of tea, a ritual that had become a cherished part of our days. Whatever you choose to take from this summer, Johnny, let it empower you. Let it be a source of strength, she said, her gaze both tender and fierce. I looked back at the house, at the rooms that had witnessed my transformation, and felt a profound gratitude. It already has, grandmother, I replied, feeling the truth of my words deep in my heart. It already has. And with that, I stepped into the future, carrying the legacy of my family, the lessons of the summer, and a newfound respect for the beautiful complexity of human identity. As the leaves began to turn, signaling the end of summer, the time came for me to return home. The journey back felt different than the one I had made months earlier. I was not the same person who had timidly stepped into his grandmother's world. I was someone new, someone who had traversed deep waters and emerged knowing more about the depths of his own soul. The car ride to my parents' house was filled with a mix of anticipation and anxiety. How would my father react? Though his health had improved significantly, the emotional wounds between us were still tender, still healing. My mother, who had kept in close contact throughout the summer, assured me that he was eager to see me, but I couldn't help but worry about how he would perceive the changes in me. Upon arriving, my mother greeted me with open arms and tearful eyes, overwhelmed by the visible changes in her son. Johnny, you look wonderful, she whispered, as if seeing me for the first time. My father's greeting was more reserved, his eyes searching mine, 
looking for traces of the son he knew within the young man who stood before him. The initial awkwardness at dinner slowly melted away as we began to share stories of the past months. I spoke of the garden, the library, and the many lessons learned under my grandmother's roof. With each word, I saw my father's rigid demeanor soften, his curiosity piqued by my descriptions of personal growth and understanding. Son, I... I'm sorry for the distance, my father finally said, his voice thick with emotion. Hearing about your summer, I realize how much I've missed, how much I've misunderstood about what all this meant to you, to us. The openness in his words broke down the last barriers between us. We talked late into the night, not just about the summer, but about his experiences, his fears, and his hopes for our family. It was a conversation that mended old wounds and sowed the seeds for new beginnings. In the days that followed, I found myself reflecting on the integration of my experiences into my everyday life. The freedom and understanding I had embraced as Jenny now informed my actions and decisions as Johnny. I found a balance, a way to express the myriad parts of myself without fear or shame. As I walked through the neighborhood one crisp morning, I realized that the journey I had embarked upon at my grandmother's insistence was not just about understanding gender or family traditions, but about understanding humanity, our shared struggles, joys, and the infinite ways we experience life. The story of that summer became a turning point, not just for me, but for my family. We began to communicate more openly, to embrace our differences and support each other's journeys. The generational misunderstandings that had once seemed insurmountable were now bridges we crossed together, strengthened by empathy and love. Standing in the garden I had tended during the summer, now preparing for winter, I felt a profound sense of peace. The plants would sleep, but they would return in the spring, renewed and vibrant. Like them, I had been given a chance to grow, to shed old leaves and sprout new life. The future was uncertain, but it was bright with possibilities, rich with the promise of continued growth and deeper connections. As I looked back at the house, now a symbol of transformation and new beginnings, I knew that this was just the beginning of a lifelong journey of discovery and acceptance, a journey I was now ready to embrace with an open heart and a curious soul.